Okay, hey, how you doing? Uh, we're going to talk about really quickly how do we graph a trigonometric function with a period change. So we were talking about in class for a while just how you graph regular y equals sine of x. So we're going to talk about y equals sine of x versus y equals the sine of 3 fifths x. So the way you do this is it comes back to this form where it says y equals a times the sine of uh, bx, where a is your amplitude and b is the amount of cycles in 2 pi. So if I come up to this normal one here where it says y equals sine of x, if we relate this back to the um, unit circle, the unit circle is broken into four quadrants, which is why you'll see on my graph here, I have my graph from the starting point to the end point is broken into four equal increments because that is all connected and based off of the unit circle and the quadrant, uh, the quadrantal angles. So when I take a look at this, I'm now going to be concerned with what happens if I, this B has a number other than one because remember that means the amount of cycles there are. So in the regular sine function, it says there's one cycle. So remember the cycle of sine looks like starting at zero. So it starts at zero, it goes up, it comes back down to zero, it goes down, it goes back up. So how does that change? Well, that changes the period because a period, remember, is related to the amount of time it takes for your function to complete one cycle, okay? So, in this particular case, I'm now saying that in a period of 2 pi, in the original function of 2 pi, I am now only having 3 fifths of that cycle is being shown. Well, I'm not concerned with 3 fifths, I want to know what it is for an entire cycle. So an entire cycle takes how long of a time? So one cycle is equivalent to one period. So if I want to take a look at what is the one cycle, well right now I'm just saying from 0 to 2 pi it's only 3 fifths. So how do I figure out how much of a full cycle it is? Well I come over here and I take the original period, which is 2 pi. And what I do is I divide that by 3 fifths. So I divide it by 3 fifths, and when I do do that, you will find that after you go through and multiply everything out, you're going to get that this is going to be 5 pi over 6. So when I go through and multiply it through, I get 10 pi over 3. Sorry, not 5 pi over 6, you're going to get 10 pi over 3. Because when I go through and multiply it, remember you multiply by the reciprocal, so 5 goes up and it becomes... 5 pi over 5 pi times or 2 pi times 5, which is 10 pi divided by 3. So now the question is, is how do I figure out what the intervals are going to be? Because remember, there are four intervals in one period, and that is going back to the idea of the unit circle where there are four quadrants. So every period has four equivalent intervals. Just like the unit circle can be broken into four even quadrants of 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, and 270 to 360. Same type of concept. So my, inter my period needs to be broken into four equivalent intervals. Because at those intervals, each time, my first interval for the sine function is going to be my maximum if it's a positive function. So I'm going to now take a look at this. So I need to take 10 pi over 3 and divide it by 4. And when I do that... I get the function and I go 10 pi over 3, okay, and I divide this by 4, which is the same thing now as multiplying by 1 fourth, and I get 10 pi over 12. Well, 10 pi over 12 simplifies to being 5 pi over 6. So, what that now shows is that every step has a length of 5 pi over 6. So when I come up here, my very first step, this is 5 pi over 6. This is 10 pi over 6, 15 pi over 6, and 20 pi over 6. But I just said the period went to 10 pi over 3. And this is 20 pi over 6. Well, guess what? When you reduce 20 pi over 6, okay, so if I take a look at these intervals, where I would say this is 5 pi over 6, and I would say this is 10 pi over 6, this is 15 pi over 6, this is 20 pi over 6, how does 20 pi over 6 match with 10 pi over 3 when I just said my period is that length? Well, 20 pi over 6 is just 
all of that stuff not, is 10 pi over 3 reduced. So this really is, 20 pi over 6 is really my 10 pi over 3. Okay, 15 pi over 6, it's in the middle. I'm not going to worry about writing this on the graph because it comes too much. And 10 pi over 6, guess what? That's your middle point. So that actually reduces to 5 pi over 3. So now this is 5 pi over 3. So now once I have my axes drawn, okay, I now need to look at back at what's the amplitude of this. So what's my maximum and minimum height? And in this case, the amplitude is 1 because the coefficient of the actual function is a 1. So now I can go to start to draw it. So I always start at my intercept where I would take sine of 3 fifths times 0. Sine of 3 fifths times 0 is just 0, 0. So the input of 0 gives me the output for this function of 0. And then I can start to follow the pattern of the sine function, where the sine function, when it's a positive function, the next interval will always be its maximum. So I go up to its maximum, and then the next interval will bring me back down to zero, and then the next interval will give me my minimum, and then the final interval will give me back to zero. So now all I have to do is just simply go through and connect the dots with a smooth curve, and I will have the sine function over one period. So the sine function of 3 pi, of sine of 3 fifths, x looks like such. And remember, the important thing here is, is the fact that all of my graphs could look the same, but it's the intervals that have to be marked. Because if I don't mark the intervals, then I don't know whether this is correct or not. So I hope that helped with graphing uh, a change of period for the sine function. Uh, next video, we're going to talk about the same thing, but with a cosine function.